this. Okay, you can see me? Inshallah. Yes, very well. Okay, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, you started recording? Yes. Okay, inshallah. Okay, so, salam alaikum, ladies. And today I want to talk to you about um, two of the names of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim. Now, because I am really bad in pronouncing, I try my best not to use the Arabic. So if somebody else would like to say the Arabic for me, otherwise I will just be saying the translation of the meaning. Um, I really, especially when I'm reciting or talking about Quran, I don't like making mistakes. So I try my best not to do it in Arabic unless I'm absolutely sure that I'm gonna do it as well as possible. So um, the names of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, um, both come from the same root, which is Rahim, and they're normally translated as mercy and beneficence. But there's a slight problem with this translation. This translation, um, subhanAllah, it doesn't give the meaning of the word the way that it should. Um, the word Rahman and Rahim comes from the word Raham, which in the Arabic language is the womb of the woman when she's pregnant. So why is this important? SubhanAllah. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and the meaning is, I am Ar-Rahman. I created the Rahim and derived a name for it from my name. Hence, whenever it comes, what, whoever comes from it, and family ties are important in terms of this, I will keep ties to him, and whoever severs it, I will sever ties with him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in using this word, Ar-Rahman, using Ar-Rahim, using the, the, the term Rahim, the womb of the woman. He is showing us the epitome, the ideal that we as limited human beings have for the concept of mercy, for the concept of forgiveness. When we think in this life, because again, our mind is limited, our knowledge is limited, who and what we are compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no actual comparison because there is such a large amount of knowledge and mercy and everything between us and Allah that you cannot even count it. You cannot understand it. You can't get to the level of subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he gives us examples, he tries to use the things that we as humans understand, we as humans have experience with. And one of the greatest, most common ways for us to think of love and mercy and forgiveness is the relationship between a mother and her child. When we think of the ultimate sacrificer, we think of the mother, subhanAllah. We think of what the mother goes through. I want you to sit here and think, those of you who have children, and if you don't have children, think about what your own mothers had gone through. Do you know that when we are pregnant with our children, that child takes everything from us, everything. And the mother without knowing gives it, but even if she knows she will give it willingly. We don't go to the dentist, why? Because this might harm the baby. We don't take medicines when we're sick, why? Because this might harm the baby. The baby needs calcium, it takes the calcium from our bones. The baby needs nutrients, it takes the nutrients from our bones. We sacrifice everything, including our bodies for our children. So when we use, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the word Rahim to, say, to take his name that is the epitome, the top, the, the, the most, the most in terms of mercy and forgiveness, he took Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. SubhanAllah, from this term, which again, for us as limited humans, it's the top in our mind of mercy. No one is more merciful than the mother to the child in this life. Among the amount of love and mercy that is possible, the amount of forgiveness that's possible, usually in this life, it's the mother. SubhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his name from, from this or took the name, made the name from this, 
Subhanallah. So why did Allah take the word Rahim and derive his name from it? Think about a mother's womb, which is such a beautiful example of Rahma. The womb itself, the place that we hold the child, is a source of protection. It is a source of protection how? It is a source of protection such that the mother will be harmed before the child is harmed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put layers upon layers on the womb to protect the child. So the womb of the woman, it's not just the skin. You have the outer skin, you have the inner skin, you have the liquid that protects it. You know that when you ensource something within a liquid, actually when you hit that, what is inside the liquid, and even with us, it's even more than a liquid, it's more of a gel that's holding the child inside. The blood becomes like a congealed gel around the child. So when you hit this, this liquid and gel stops the movement of the hit. Every action has an equal and, and opposite reaction. This is physics 101. So, but when that thing that hits, so if something hits our belly, if something hits us when we're pregnant, it actually has a huge extra layer and layer of what? A protection. So a mother's womb is a kind of protection. SubhanAllah. It's a place where one grows, develops, and is nurtured. In the womb, you require nothing else. All you require is what is inside the womb. And the child inside the raham is taken care of and protected in every single way. How does this relate to Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our protection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that grows us and develops us and nurtures us. Every single creature, every single thing that exists on this earth is cared for by Allah. Allah knows about every leaf. Allah knows about every drop of rain that falls on every leaf, on every tree or plant in the universe from the beginning, the first day to the last day. And every single one of them is under the protection of Allah. Where does the nutrients come from? For us, for plants, for everything that is alive on this earth? From Allah, subhanAllah. And how do they develop? Through the will of Allah. And how are they nurtured? From Allah. Ev Allah is the source of everything. Just as the Rahim is the source of everything for the child, Allah is the source of everything, the protection, the development, the nurturing, everything for every creature that lives for every creation that lives. And in this, I'm including plants. It doesn't have to be something that, that eats and drinks and walks around or talks or makes noise. Even the plants, every single thing that has any form of life is taken care of by Allah. So this concept of a rahim is a beautiful way for us, again, in our limited understanding, our limited mind to understand who and what Allah is for us, who he is to us. SubhanAllah. You know, sometimes we think that we take care of ourselves, but we don't. Sometimes we think we have the control to help others, to take care of others, but we don't. We have zero control. Control is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the hardest things for us as human beings is to let go of control. I tell you the story. There was a lady, subhanAllah. She was in South Carolina. This woman, mashallah aleha, she was fine. She was financially okay. And her husband was in business with this other man. Now, she did not know the situation of this other man, but she was pregnant. So the man was in business with another man. This other man, he was going to travel with the husband of my friend. When they were getting ready to travel, the woman was very, very, very big 
pregnant. And you know, when you're at the end, it's very difficult. And he didn't want to leave her and her children alone and her family was not near. So he spoke with his business partner whose situation he didn't know. He just knows that he hired this man and this man works for him. He said, look, can my family stay with your family while we're gone, while we're traveling? And the man, mashallah, he said, okay, fine, no problem. So the, the, my friend's husband took her and her children to this man's house. He did not know that this man was so poor that they had zero, zero food in their house. Nothing. Absolutely nothing of food was in his house. And the woman had no money to buy food. My friend, because she was financially okay, when she did arrive in this house and when it was time for the mealtime, the men were gone. They were out on a farm in the middle of nowhere. It was getting late and the lady was like, I'm so sorry, my car broke down and I don't have the ability or the money to go to bring us food. So please let us be patient for the night and tomorrow we can walk into the town and we can buy something or we can call someone and we can order, they're, they're, they'll, we'll find a way. Subhanallah. My friend, she's like, Subhanallah, I have a checkbook, I have money, I have ability, I'm going to take care of this situation. I didn't know that this family was in this bad of a situation. She said, but I'm going to take care of it. So in her mind, it was her who was going to be the provider, her who had control. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted this as a lesson to her, that we do not have control, the protection, the growth, the development, the nurturement, the food, the water, the air, every single thing that we have is from him. So that night she slept early. Her children, she said, they were so impatient because they were not used to this. The other lady, mashallah, tabarakallah, her children were quiet and patient because apparently this was not the first time for them. The next morning when my friend got up for Fajr in her mind, she said, I'm going to take care of this. I have the control. I can take care of this. I'm going to save us. Subhanallah. She said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught me and reminded me that it's not from me, it's from him. It's not from us. Everything is from him. She said she finished her prayers. She peeked in on the sister. The sister was praying and she went to the door, opened the door in her big, big, giant pregnant state. She was going to walk to town and buy food and bring it back and save this family. When she opened the door in front of the front door were bags of food. Someone had left food outside in the night. It wasn't the woman's family, her, or her husband. He didn't know anything about it. SubhanAllah, Allah had provided for them. And she said, that made me remember, that made me think about the fact that everything comes from Allah. We have no control. We have zero control in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who grows us, develops us, nurtures us, gives us everything, subhanAllah. And she was a mother wanting to protect her children. She was a mother who understood the pain of the other mother, subhanAllah. But as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of the baby inside of the rahim, inside of the womb of the woman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of everything and everyone else. So how is rahma different from mercy? The protection of the womb, unlike simple mercy, doesn't include the idea of punishment. Think about this. When you think of rahma and the protection in the womb, it has within it compassion. It has softness, ease, delicacy. It includes the need to handle with care. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a Rahman exhibits to us his caring of us. His understanding that we are delicate. We can break. Subhanallah. We can break physically. We can break emotionally. We can break spiritually. And it's not difficult for us to break. Think of every single time that you have felt broken. 
Forget about a broken bone because a broken bone, that's obvious. How many times do we feel broken inside? Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of us. He understands how delicate we are and he understands the care and the and how we must be handled with such care. Subhanallah. The knowledge that Allah has of us is better than even the knowledge we have of ourselves. So as a result, through his rahmah, he takes care of every matter that we have. Allah will never abandon us. Allah will never leave us. Allah is rahmah. He is ar-Rahman. He is the Ex the exhibit, the, the personification of the word. When you think mercy, think Allah. Subhanallah. So many times things happen to us as humans. And because we are easily broken, it's easy for shaitan to play with our minds and to think that Allah is going to destroy us. Allah is going to burn us. Allah is going to do horrible things to us because we are not perfect. But subhanAllah, Allah gave us the example of the mother, the womb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this example. Why? Because when you look at a mother, a mother, when you look at the ideal, the, what we understand to be a mother, you look at all of the sacrifice that the mother does, all of the mercy that a mother has, and know that this is not even. 1% of Allah's mercy. Because 1% of Allah's mercy has been divided among all humanity, all animals, all creatures from the beginning to the end. 1% has been divided between us all. SubhanAllah. You see that your child does something. Can you forgive your child? Can you forgive your child? SubhanAllah. The norm is you forgive them no matter what they do. You forgive them. You forgive them no matter. They broke the most precious thing to you in this life. You get angry, but you forgive them. And you have mercy as a mother. You've done things to make your mother so angry, but she still loves you. She forgives you. She goes forward with you. She doesn't leave you. She doesn't desert you. And her mercy is just a drop, a drop in all of the 1% of mercy that Allah gave among us. So imagine the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always take care of us. Allah knows that each and every single one of us is going to mess up. We're going to sin. We're going to do bad. We're gonna harm ourselves, we're gonna harm others, we're gonna disobey him, we're gonna disobey everyone, we're gonna do everything. Every bad that you can imagine human beings do it. But what does Allah want from us? For us to come back to him in repentance, to make istighfar, to ask him for forgiveness, to come back with pure tawbah, in your heart, you know, you know, you know that you've done wrong and you ask Allah, say, Allah, forgive me for this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his mercy, his rahmah, cares for us and forgives us, brings us back to him, subhanAllah. Let's us start again. Wallah, think about the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the angel who writes, hold the pen for six hours. This is Rahmah. Six hours he does not write down the bad deed that we've done. Allah Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his Rahmah is different from normal mercy. How? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy has no limit. Because our, our mercy, me, me Sharifa, the mercy that I have is nothing. It's, it's very, 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 very minuscule when you compare it to all of the mercy that exists in this life from the beginning of time to the end of time. And that's 1% of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. That's 1% of his rahmah. 
His name is not a rahim the one who shows mercy. His name is Rahman. And again, it utilizes the form of the fa'al in indicating something that is excessive and extreme in its unlimited form. Thus, Allah is a Rahman. His mercy is at its peak and it's unlimited, extreme, beyond our imagination because he is full of Rahmah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in saying that he is ar-Rahman, we are saying that he is the embodiment of mercy, but a mercy that is beyond any mercy that we can comprehend. SubhanAllah. Also ar-Rahman is the one who's endowed with the mercy that extends to all creation in this world, all creation. Think of all that has come and left and all that is to come and to leave until Yom al Qiyamah, until the day of judgment. Every single thing that has been created by Allah, his mercy has extended over all of it. He is Rahman, merciful to believers, to disbelievers, to plants, to animals, to everything in this life, in the hereafter, he will only be a Rahman with the believers. But in this life, he is a Rahman with believers, disbelievers, everyone, everything. Ar Rahim, the other name taken from the same root, is the one endowed with mercy that extends only to the believers in this world and the next world. So when we say Ar Rahman, and we talk about his mercy as Ar-Rahman, we're talking about for everything and everyone. When we say Ar-Rahim, we're talking about Allah's mercy, not just for us and the disbelievers and for the plants and for everything and for everyone, no. It is for the believers. This is a special mercy on top of his mercy is another special mercy that goes over that for the believers. For those who believe la ilaha illallah. For those of us who do everything in our power to live and dwell and do everything within la ilaha illallah. Within belief of Allah. Subhanallah. Abu Ali al-Farsi said, Ar-Rahman is a name that encompasses every type of mercy that Allah has. Ar-Rahim is what affects the believers. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what means, and he, Allah, is ever Rahim to the believers. So Ar-Rahim is a quality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has of extreme mercy for those who believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything. And as the creator of everything, he has rahma for everything he creates. He wants us to succeed and to be from the believers. So he gives us chance after chance after chance. And subhanAllah, I testify, before I became a Muslim, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided me to al-Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept pushing Islam in front of my face. What does this mean? This means that I know most people in this world, Islam has come to them. They have heard of Islam. I met Muslims before I became a Muslim. I read Quran before I became a Muslim. I read Hadith before I became a Muslim. I would say, no, this is beautiful, this is nice, but... And then I'd go look at something else because I didn't want Islam. I would talk to somebody else and try to learn something different because I didn't want Islam. But Allah kept putting Islam in front of me. Allah kept showing me the truth again and again and again. From the first time I heard and really knew about Islam to the day I became Muslim was over three years. This is not three years of Boom, suddenly Islam is in front of me and khalas, I'm a Muslim. No, this was three years of I see it, I reject it. I see it, I reject it. I see it, I reject it. 
even among the believers. We are making sin time after time after time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in front of us something that shows us this is wrong. You need to stop doing this. He'll bring us a fitna as a result of the haram that we're doing. But we keep going forward. We keep going into the haram because we are very stubborn creatures. Sometimes we become stubborn in our haram. We become stubborn in our disbelief. So Allah shows mercy to each and every one of his creation. He shows mercy to the disbelievers. He shows them ways to come to him. But it is we who reject him. We take that choice and reject him. But Allah doesn't want us to fail. Even as Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps showing us his mercy. How? I make salah. My salah is worth more than the actual salah. I do a good deed. My good deed is worth more than the actual deed. I think about a bad deed and decide not to do a bad deed. Allah gives me a good deed for it. Allah keeps what we call padding the scales. What is padding the scales? When you pad the scale, it means that you add extra to it. Hello? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give us a good deed as a good deed alone. A good deed can be multiplied by 10 seven to from, sorry from by 10 to 700 times for one deed because Allah wants us to succeed. He is a rahman. He wants us to succeed whether we're muslim or not muslim he wants us to come back to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we ask for forgiveness erases erases or does it, or has the angel not even write down what we have done? This is a Rahim. Because this is special for the Muslims. This is special for the believers. His mercy has no bounds. And when you allow shaitan to make you feel that there is no forgiveness for you, then you have lost yourself and you have lost the connection to Allah as a Rahman a Rahim. There is forgiveness for everybody. Allah allows forgiveness for everyone as long as it is sincere to Him and to Him alone. That you are only asking Allah for your forgiveness because you know that you have done wrong. Subhanallah. And Allah will forgive. He has promised to forgive. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah created mercy in 100 parts and he retained with him 99 parts and he has sent down upon the earth one part. And it is because of this one part that there is mutual love among the creation so much, for that, for, so, much so that the animal lifts up his hoof from the young one feeling that it might harm it. As I said before, this is what I mean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that one part out of a hundred, that one percent is spread among all of creation. And think of the mercy that you've had on your children, on your friends, on your family. Think of mercy that's been extended to you by another creature, by another human being. And think that this is nothing compared to the mercy, the rahmah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala retained with himself. It was narrated that Umar, Umar ibn al-Khattab said, some prisoners were brought to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and there was a woman among the prisoner, prisoners who was searching for her child. When she found her child, she embraced him and put her to her breast. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, do you think that this woman would throw her child in the fire? We said, no, by Allah, not if she was able not to. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah is more merciful to his slaves than this woman is to her child. If you cannot take your child and throw them into the fire, because of the mercy and love that you have for your child, think of the mercy of Allah. Why? Think, ask yourself the question, why would Allah add barakah to our barakah? 
It's not enough that he gives us baraka. Alhamdulillah, we would be grateful just to have one baraka for every good deed that we do. But Allah knows who and what we are. So he adds baraka to the baraka. He multiplies the baraka. He gives us baraka for doing something and he gives us baraka for not doing something. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fair beyond fair. He is the most fair. And he is the most merciful and he wants us to succeed. Sisters, we know the story of the man who killed 99 people. And he went looking for a way to seek forgiveness and he ended up killing 100, the, num the next person. And he kept going looking for a way of forgiveness. He had already killed 100 people and he dies. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? Does he count the hundred or does he count the niya, the intention, the steps towards going to the people of forgiveness, the village where the man would find forgiveness? Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of the hadiths about this, about this narration, in one of the hadiths, it says that Allah shrunk the earth so that the man who had killed a hundred people but was looking for repentance would be closer to the land of repentance than he was to the land of sin. Allah wants us to succeed. It is we who do not want to succeed. It is us who stops ourselves. As long as we understand the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we can understand that when we do make our mistakes, when we sin, when we fall, we come back to Allah. We go back and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness because he is our Rahman, he is our Rahim. He is trying, showing us that we can indeed be forgiven. He is trying to let us know by using this name connected to the womb of the mother, connected to our highest ideal of mercy in this life, so that we, with our small minds, with our limited understanding, with our lack of knowledge of that which we do not see, so that we have something to connect it to, the mercy of a mother. The mercy of a mother who draws, who goes looking for her child and brings him to her breast. The mercy of a mother who lifts his hoof off the ground to not harm its child. SubhanAllah. Allah wants us to understand mercy, the basic concept of mercy. As a mother, if you are a mother, think of how many times you forgave your child horrible things. And as they get older, your children commit more and more sins. And we forgive them. And we bring them back. When we see that they come to us crying or sad, or they say they're sorry, we accept it. And we do not see what is in their head. We do not see what is in their heart. We can't see that. So when we come to Allah asking and begging for forgiveness, Allah sees what's in our head and what's in our heart. Allah knows that our repentance is real and true. And he grants it because he is a Rahman and he is a Rahim. The name Ar Rahman is unique to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not permissible to name any other with the name Ar Rahman. Allah says what means call upon, say, call upon Allah or call upon Ar-Rahman. Whatever name you call to him belong the best names. When we want to repent to Allah, when we want help from Allah, let us call upon the names that fit what we want. I want Allah's mercy. So I raise my hands, Ya Allah Ar-Rahman, Ya Allah Ar-Rahim. I call upon Allah by the name of the characteristic that I want from him. So I call upon Allah to his unique name, Ar-Rahman. 
I call upon Allah to his unique name, Ar-Rahim. Because there is no Rahmah like the Rahmah of Allah. There is, no, there is no mercy like the mercy of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we know and we understand the names of Allah, how does it affect us? What does it do for us to know that Allah is a Rahman, that Allah is a Rahim? How does it affect us? Why should we know these names? Well, first off, when you know how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, when you know the level of mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for us, it compels us to love him. Our mother sacrifices everything for us. Our mother gave up so much for us. And we love her for that. What has Allah done for us? What mercy has Allah shown to us? Wallah, we all have at least, at least one example in our lives where we know that this happened because of, and only because of the mercy of Allah. And when we see and feel this, we know Allah, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, and we love him. Knowing and understanding Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim helps us to love Allah more. It also, subhanAllah, gives us a sense of shyness in, disobe in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do you feel when you do something haram in front of your mother? How do you feel when you do something that, that she dislikes your mother in front of her? And her mercy and love is nothing compared to the mercy and love of Allah. So if we understand the mercy and love of Allah, the love that we will have for Allah is so much greater and the shyness of doing something that displeases Allah will raise inside of us, will become stronger inside of us because we understand what Allah has done for us. And it makes us hate and be shy of the concept of going against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of disobeying him. The next thing is it naturally makes a believer want to be more merciful to others. When we know of the mercy of Allah, we feel more merciful towards others. When we know that someone's done something good for us as humans, then we want to do for others. There's this thing that they have in the United States. It's called pay it forward, okay? And what is this? This is you go to some place like McDonald's or Starbucks or Burger King or some any restaurant and you pay extra money for the person behind you. It's called paying it forward. So the psychological theory behind this is what? I pay for them. They feel, oh, look at the mercy of this stranger who did this for me. Let me do this for someone else. And it's supposed to help to spread mercy and love between people. The mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows for us. SubhanAllah. Anything and everything that you and I have in this life is from Allah, from his mercy. Any good that has ever come to us is from the mercy of Allah. And wallahi, every bad that has come to us is from the mercy of Allah. Everything in this life is from Allah's mercy. So understanding this, understanding Allah as a Rahman, understanding the rah Rahmah that Allah has helps us, melts our heart and makes us to be more merciful towards other people. If we're not feeling more merciful, then we don't understand. If we're not feeling more merciful, then we're not doing Islam right. We're not doing what we're supposed to do as Muslims right. It also encourages us to know that we have to work hard to understand, to know what Allah loves and what Allah hates. 
Wallahi, we love a simple human being in this life and we want to do what's good for them, what makes them happy. I love my son, so I make my son the foods that he loves. I love my husband, so I do things special for my husband because I love him. I show more mercy towards the people I love than the people I don't love. So when we know and understand the mercy, the rahmah that Allah has given to us, subhanAllah, it helps us to also think, what is it that Allah loves? What is it that Allah hates? How can I please him more? What can I do to, 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 to show Allah I love him? I look for what he loves and I do what he loves. I look at what he hates and I avoid what he hates because I am so, so grateful for his mercy. And even while I'm grateful for his mercy, I recognized I can never repay Allah. I can never repay Allah. I know that there's no way for me to repay. Dawood alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the smallest, the smallest blessing he's given us? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered, a breath. A breath. I want you to sit and think. If you had to think every time you took a breath, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. You had to think about the process of breathing. You would not have a mind to do anything else. You'd be terrified to forget to say breathe in and to breathe out. SubhanAllah, this is a barakah. Think about the fact that a breath out is carbon dioxide, which feeds the plants and the breath, the, the plants create oxygen, which feeds us. This is a breath. And this is just the tip of the iceberg when you think about a breath. When you think about one breath feeding every cell in your body, running through your blood system, how it's clarified in the, in the lungs. So many things that just books could be written and have been written about a breath. And this is the smallest barakah that Allah gave us. Imagine the greatest. We will never, we will never ever, ever, ever be able to fulfill Allah's rights upon us. We are never, ever, ever going to be able to repay Allah, subhanAllah. So we recognize this when we think about the rahmah that Allah has given us. But it also makes us think and know and to not despair the idea, the concept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never withhold his mercy from us. Do not worry. Do not despair. Do not think that Allah cannot have mercy on you and on me. Allah is the most merciful. As an animal can have mercy on its child, as we can have mercy on our children, as we can have mercy on others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy has no comparison to ours. So don't despair. Know that his mercy is available. So when you want to talk about compelling love for Allah, we know it's human nature to be grateful and to love those who show us mercy. If you've done something against someone, you've harmed someone, and you ask for forgiveness and they give it to you, and this is a simple human being, you are so grateful to them. It opens your heart to love for them. It should open our hearts even more to love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jibreel salam, said, tell me about excellence in faith. He replied it, to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is to worship Allah as though you see him and though you do not see him, you know that he sees you. When you think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, you see, you see and you know that everything that you do, Allah sees it. Allah knows everything that we do. So when you rely upon his mercy, you also become shy, afraid. It keeps you from doing bad because you want that mercy. 
and you want that forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, what means pardon people and overlook their faults? Do you not wish that Allah should forgive you? And Allah most, is the most forgiving, most merciful. When we receive mercy, we want to give mercy forward. When we know and understand the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, that he has prepared for us, then it's easier to want to help others. And then subhanAllah, again, remember how I told you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes those good deeds that we do and he adds to them. When we are merciful to others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful more to us. When we do for others, Allah does more for us. SubhanAllah. So as much as we want to do it to please Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still giving us more and more and more without any, without any limit because he is, mercy is limitless. When we recognize Allah's mercy and we reflect on it, it leads to an increase in our love for him and loving someone includes wanting to please them. To please someone, we have to know what makes them happy. We have to know what makes them sad. So by learning and understanding what is Ar-Rahman, what is Ar-Rahim, then it makes us to understand how much Allah is merciful and that makes us want to please him. We want him happy with us. We don't want him angry with us. We want him to show his mercy to us. So how do we do that? We have to know what makes him happy, what makes him angry. What is good and what is bad in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says what mean, none has the right to be worshipped, but you, glorified be you, truly I have been of the wrongdoers. La ilaha illa ant subhanak inni kuntu min al -dhanimin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the dua of Yunus, alayhi salam. He made this dua when he was in the belly of the whale in recognition of his mistake. The prophets of Allah knew the mercy of Allah and begged for it. We know that we are wrong, so wrong, and we know that when we are wrong, the only thing that can help us is the vastness, the largeness, the limitless, limitlessness of Allah's mercy. And this should humble us and have us calling upon Allah night and day. And with this dua, Rasul said that with this dua, if you ask Allah with this dua, Allah will not refuse your dua. SubhanAllah. Allah says what means, oh my servants who have transgressed against themselves, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, it is he who is the most forgiving, the merciful. He is Al-Ghafoor Al-Rahim. And we're going to talk about Al-Ghafoor probably in our next class. But Al-Rahim, this is again, he's talking to the Muslims. He's talking to us who believe and try our best to live La ilaha illallah. And he's telling us, don't worry. Allah is merciful. He's telling us that he is Ar-Rahim, that he is the one who will forgive us. We just need to return to him. We just need to make tawbah sincerely. And do not think that you can make tawbah and then you commit a sin and then khalas, no more tawbah. No, you keep doing it again and again and again until it sticks. Keep trying because Allah can forgive again and again and again as long as you are truly sorry. As long as you believe in Allah and you are truly sorry and you return to Allah, Allah will continue to forgive us. But it has to be sincere. You have to do your best. And you and I know, we know deep in our heart when we're sincere, when we really mean it, that we're sorry. And when we know that we're sorry, Allah will also know that we are sorry. 
because Allah knows everything. Subhana wa bihamdik, shadwan la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Thank you very much, sisters. Um, I'm open now if you have any questions. I hope I covered this well enough. And again, forgive me, my pronunciation of Arabic is very, very bad and it, I'm shy to use it. Um, but may Allah make it easy for us all. So are there any questions? One second to open the, uh, the mics for them. One second, please. Okay. Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Wayakum. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah. So are there any actual questions, sisters? Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, actually, no question from me. I just want to appreciate that uh, we are so thankful for the wonderful explanation. Uh, just a lot of time. Thank you so much. Well, I appreciate it. And anything that I said that was right from me and everything that was wrong from, I'm sorry, everything I said wrong is from me. Everything I said right is from Allah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, sister, um, uh, today is my was first day. I just want to know: is it the uh, start, uh, the beginning, or uh, I missed a couple other names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? No, no, no. This is the first one that I've done. Um, I have I... said that I will do four, inshallah, and then we'll see how my schedule goes. Um, so for the next, I guess, yeah, the next three weeks, because this is the first one. So the next, there'll be three more classes after this for sure. And if I can, I will continue every Sunday um, covering names of Allah. Inshallah, thank you. Can the slides be shared? Yes, um, I can send the slides to, um, to someone in the center and then they can send it forward to you guys. Um, also, if anybody wants, I can put, hold on because I do other lectures as well during the week. Um, I, I try to do lectures with different lejnas in different places. I can give you my phone number. Where is the chat? Here it is. Okay, I will give you my phone number. You can add my WhatsApp. Okay. And I can add you, I have several groups. Oh, wait, I need the 965, hold on. Um, I have several groups and I can add you to a contact list that lets you know every time I do a lecture, no matter where it is. And um, I download, I, I send a link to all of my um, YouTube videos that I make after each lecture. I'm in Kuwait, so I believe that I'm at the same time zone as Mecca. Yeah, but, but we need all lectures, please, uh, in our academy. Excuse inshallah, me. Inshallah, I, I will continue to make. Yeah. I will continue to make lectures here, inshallah. Um, and yeah, that's true. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Well, we can we well, can follow you in the YouTube and in Instagram and everything that you need, inshallah. But okay. uh, the main lecture, inshallah, will be in our academy. Jazakallah yes, khairan, yes. Doctor. Inshallah, Inshallah. 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 Your families and all the teachers that they have taught you both, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan, sister Om Fajr, for uh, organizing this uh, nice lecture. Barakallah um, Just a sister, um, if you have written texts like um, uh, written, uh, written uh, uh, texts, like uh, after you finish the note, you take it from the lecture, you can share it with the sisters, inshallah. Well, um, yes. I can tell you from now, I simply write, I create the PowerPoints, but I don't, I just use these as a way to remind me of the Quran and the Hadith. Um, no, sure. But I speak from my, from without notes. I don't have notes. 
Oh, Jazakallah khair. You can share your PowerPoint if any sisters want to go back to it. Definitely, any, definitely. Yeah, if anyone, like, uh, teachers want to share it. Like, I'm teaching high school students. If I want to share it with my students, after your permission, definitely. It's not my work. It's your work, your hard work. So if I would like to share it with them, uh, I would definitely share it with them, like, as a fuck of... Uh, uh, using Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name for dua. So you can use a Rahman, you can use a Rahim. Like like you mentioned the last ayah in Surah Al Isra, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned you can say Rahman, Udur Allah, Udur Rahman, Udur Rahim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I can share it with my students. If any sisters want to go back and Jazakumullah khairan, uh, forgive me if I speak long to you or I speak. Um, uh, it's just a suggestion for you to increase your good deed. It's not nothing. It's just like, you know, we all wishing, wishing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to multiply our good deeds. So it will be great if we have any idea you can share it to increase this good deed, especially we are in the sacred, mo sacred months and we need to this, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan I have absolutely no problem sharing. I, you know, you can share the audio, the video. I will send the link. I will. I upload it into my YouTube, so I'll send you the link for that. Um, I will. You know, you you want the PowerPoint? Use it, Heather. I don't mind. Um, the more people use the things that I have, as long as there's no mistakes in them, the more baraka that I'm going to get. So please, please, definitely. please. Use it. <laughs> yes, definitely. I yeah, actually please. like to do this with my students, especially high school students, especially on Friday. I made them like sitting after Maghrib, before Maghrib actually. Uh, making some dua, making some zikr, and I assign lecture for them to listen to it and give the summary for me as a little bit of short talk. Okay. So I like to do that. So that's why I, I actually think whenever I know anyone, I would like, I think if I benefit from his knowledge, I should make others benefit, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, this, this yeah. is actually now what I've decided, which is alhamdulillah, Allah is making it easy for me is that you know now I've spent the first half of my life trying to live and take care of my family. And now that I finally, inshallah, I'm working on 